Hi, I'm Steven Feinberg, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. Our guest tonight is an award-winning filmmaker from Switzerland. He has another film this year playing at the Rhode Island International Film Festival, which I think makes four films that he's had premiere here in Rhode Island. I want to welcome our special guest, Nicholas Greinacher. Thank you very much, Stephen. Welcome, my Swiss friend. Pleasure to be here. Filmmaking friend. Thank you. So, first of all, your film, it's your fourth film, mm -hmm. premiered last night at the Rhode Island International Film Festival at the Vets. It was wonderful. Well, what's the name of your film? It's called Ayana. Ayana. Yes. And it's about a girl from Afghanistan who mm -hmm. comes with her family to Switzerland mm -hmm. and has a cultural... Well, you tell me. Tell me about the film. I thought it was beautiful. Thank you, Talk Stephen. To summarize it, if you will. So you started it well. Um... It is about a young woman who escaped the war in Afghanistan, and she escaped to Switzerland together with her family. Now, in Switzerland, she starts to open up to Western culture. Western culture means, can mean swim, for example, because in Afghanistan, women aren't allowed to swim. They are not allowed to swim no. in Afghanistan. No, they're not. And um, also, other women from, from an Islamic background, when they swim, they wear like a cover, a, a full body cover. Um, and Ayana is just seeing, you know, local women swim without the body covering, for example. And she just sees so many things that she hasn't been used to in her previous life. And the film is about her inner spring, seeing new things and wanting and seeing to, to open up and become her, herself. And by doing so, she's facing um, increased like resistance from her religious family, and so right. there, there is a clash. And you, so you've got her father, who's really rooted in. That's her brother. Oh, that's her brother. Yes. Okay. Really rooted in uh, his Islamic or conservative views. Mm. Then is that her mother, right? Yes, correct. Who is. Moving a little bit. There's a little bit of leeway. Yes. But only to so far. She'll only go so far. Yes. And then there's the daughter who, or the sister, mm -hmm. our protagonist, who is finding her own identity. Yes. And you handle it. I told you. So one of my favorite moments in the film, in the whole evening, is when... And I hope I'm not giving too much away for the audience. We'll, we'll show a clip. But there's a moment where our protagonist, she puts on that swimsuit for the first time. She goes into the water and she sees this other girl and they have mm -hmm. this moment. And she just bites her lip. Mm -hmm. It was so subtle. But as a filmmaker, audience member, I devoured that little moment. It said so much, and it was so powerful. And I, the actresses you brought here mm -hmm. to the festival, and I told them how much I loved that moment. It was so subtle. But you told me it was organic. It came from their performance. Yes, it wasn't in the script. You know, sometimes, Stephen, magic happens. You, have, you capture it, and then you, you, you are blessed with that gift. It, that will be one of the moments I will leave this whole festival, a weeks of, of movies, I will leave. And again, I get that little chill behind my neck. You captured it. Mm -hmm. As a filmmaker, you didn't cut away, you just let it sit, and it happened. I think that's something very important as a filmmaker. Uh, do you talk about or, or do you think about letting performances linger or happen and not cutting away so fast? Absolutely. So... Um a script is only as good as a script. The but film once, is only as good as a script. Yeah, and, and the script is, 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 is not the film. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the fundament for a script. And if the script doesn't work, it's likely that the film doesn't work. But if you have a script that works, um, just try out a few different takes and also let the actors uh, do stuff if, if you have time um, and just let them be, be their characters. And they also... I've made a documentary last year about a young kid, Maximilian. It's screened here, premiered here at Rhode Island. Yeah. And 
if you come from the fiction end of things and then move into documentary, I mean, you did Pell, yes. uh, the documentary, and when you do documentary, you learn to be patient. <laughs> and you have to be patient. Very. And when you're lucky, things happen that you didn't expect. Very. And that was one of those moments. So I think patience is a virtue. And um, I also think you, you cast well. You, I believe you. them. I believed all your characters. Mm -hmm. So you cast well, then you let them be. You let them perform. You let them do their craft, mm -hmm. right? It was wonderful. I just, I, I just love. I thought you and and the audience responded very, very well to your movie, which is great. Yeah, yeah. it was such an intense feeling. So the film ended. There was an applause. It was a good applause. It was a long applause. And after the applause ended, when the opening credits still sh was show were showing, people were, were were talking to each other. Right. Like really, like chatting to each other. Like for, for like half a minute. Right. And I felt that, okay, so it triggered something. So yes. I felt very relieved. You should be when, very when proud of the film. <laughs> you should be, I hope you're really, I want you to be proud of the film. Thank you. And, and thank you for sharing that. So let's talk about, Nicholas, about your career. How did you even get started? You're from, and by the way, you're from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. You've had four films that have shown uh, here in, in the Royal International Film Festival world premieres or premieres mm -hmm. so you, there's a there's a mutual love affair that that's happening between you as a filmmaker and this film festival how do you first well first how did you become a filmmaker and what inspired you to be a filmmaker um so when i was a teenager i was probably one of those kids that when the weather was nice and others were playing outside, um, I would love to be inside and watch some kind of slasher horror movies or mm. whatever. I was just more drawn to, to that media rather than doing, doing other stuff. Yeah. Um, and what always struck me is the power of film. So when a film speaks to you and reaches you and does something with you, and that's what I find one of the most powerful things. And that doesn't happen every time I watch a film. But for example, uh, last week I watched uh, Parasite in the cinema. It's a feature film that just won the Golden Palm in Cannes. Yeah. Um, film completely blew me away. Or when we talk about shorts, last year's winner here, Marguerite, that I saw on opening night. Yes. Which completely blew me away and touched, touched me deeply. It's one of those moments where I think like, wow, I want to be able to do something like that. I had a film, maybe it was in 2005, 2006, short film that played at the film festival. It was called Hibernation. Mm -hmm. And I saw the movie, and I was supposed to sit through several movies. It just hit me because it felt like, even though the film took place in England, it was about these three boys in, the, in a tree house and this one, and they had these... Um, different masks on, but it started out in like an eight millimeter feel. Mm -hmm. And that's, I made eight millimeter films and mm -hmm. it, it just hit me in this way. I'm like, it like took my breath away. And it hit me to the core where I didn't want to see any more films because I didn't want it to influence anything. I just wanted to absorb the beauty of the moment. Mm -hmm. And I still see the film every couple of years and I, I don't know if it's going to have that same feeling, but it does. Mm -hmm. So it's nice when a film that can hit you, and it can be a film, that one was directed by a person named John Williams, of whom I've never met, but you can make a film like Marguerite mm -hmm. hit you. And totally hits you, stays with you, sticks with you, and if you're lucky, it changes you. Your movie, I'm sure, is going to resonate to quite a few people. Mm. Um, I've seen, and especially, you know, you were talking about Switzerland. Switzerland right now has got a lot of refugees. It's very welcoming of refugees. Yeah. And, and now how does that impact the yeah. community and the individual? So we have a very high rate of foreigners in our country. We have about 30%. And um, I think it's one of the examples where this high rate of, of foreigners doesn't really influence how we live with each other in a bad way. So the, the integration and the welcoming of, of those cultures, I think, works really well. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, the Middle East has been a boiling pot for so long. You had the war in Syria, you had the war in Afghanistan. And we have, for quite some years now, a steady stream of people um, applying for, for a refugee in, in, in Switzerland. And um, 
So it's everywhere, especially in the cities. You see you're confronted with, uh, with, with those people and you can only imagine from your like safe harbor how, how hard it is um, if you have to leave your home if you must leave your home, and if you are forced to, to adapt to, uh, to a new way of life. They've seen horrors. Yes. The true we horrors. We can only of, imagine. No, no uh, horrors of humanity, mm. searching for a better life, searching for hope, mm. searching for something for their kids. You know, that's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's, 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 it's a big thing, and it's also a very delicate thing if you want to touch that issue as a filmmaker. Right. You have to be very, very careful. We did so much research. Um, I had a Swiss-Iranian filmmaker who was actually nominated for an Academy Award five years ago. Um, her name was uh, Talkon Hamzabi. She did a short film called Parvane. Mm. And she worked with me very closely on the script because we, we knew that if, you want, if we want to tell a story like that, we have to get the facts right. If it's a story about the family from Afghanistan, what's her background? What's her class? How did they come to Switzerland? How long are they staying here for them to have an own, their own apartment? You know, you mentioned it at the beginning of this interview. So we have her brother, who is more on the conservative side. He doesn't really open up to this new society. In his mind, he's already back at Afghanistan a couple of years later, right? Then we have the mother. And to some extent, she's willing to open up, but there are some boundaries. And then we have Ayana, the daughter who is the other extreme, who sees everything around her and she has her inner spring and opens up to everything that she's seeing. So that creates so much conflict. In your mind, what happened to the father? Um, the father is dead in this film, right? So um, he Did was killed in them? war. That propelled them to run? That was one of the reasons why they didn't want to stay in that country anymore right. and thought it's too dangerous and he left them some money as the backstory, yeah. and then they decided to, to, to start a new life at, you know, for the long term or at least temporarily until it's safe to go back. Right. Yeah. You did a great job. All right, let's go back to now the beginning of you, of, yes. your, uh, of you as a filmmaker. Yeah, as a teenager as a watching teenager. slasher right. movies. Right. I had a, a weird fascination for, for slasher horror films, you know, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part oh. 8 or something oh. like that. Oh, the first um, one, the Toby Hooper first one. Yeah, really One bad. of the scariest movies you'll ever see. Yes, or Friday the 13th right. or stuff like that. Right. Um, and then I think in my early 20s, I started to, to really have that longing to, to also tell stories. And I started with screenwriting. There is an amazing book called The Tools of Screenwriting. It's as thick as this. Yep. It's like two thirds theory and then one third um, Pragmatic. films yeah. that discuss the previously described tools in those films. Okay. They have screen, uh, films from all genres, but uh, like Network or ET mm. or uh, stuff like that. And I spent, I think, two or three years just working on, on screenwriting, mm -hmm. the tools and how it works. Right. I wrote the feature screenplay, it's probably the worst ever. I didn't do anything with it mm -hmm. um, until a friend of mine told me like, listen, there's also a nice little format that you can start with, it's short films. And I didn't really have any connection to short films. I was a bit suspi uh, suspicious, like, well, yeah. I want to do real movies, you know? Right. And the real movie is a long movie. Right. Um, but then I started to get into it and um, like, okay, this is it. You can run with a very low budget. You get a few talented people around yourself. And you can make a short. And then that's what I did. And as, as a Swiss citizen, yeah. um, there was always one thing that bothered me. In the Second World War, we were kind of independent, neutral. Mm -hmm. and we lo let a lot of Jewish refugees escape to Switzerland from the Nazis. Yep. But there was a time during Second World War where suddenly we closed our borders, knowing what happens when they are rejected right. for political reasons. Right. And that's a part of, of the Swiss history that people don't really like to talk about. There's not a single statue or memorial for that period of time, mm -hmm. but it exists. So I, I thought that, you know, I want to tell a story about that issue. I made a short film about that issue, not knowing, you know, what filmmaking is about and stuff. And this film, the first festival that that it got into was the Roving Eye International Film Festival, which is the side festival of, of Riff. Right. And so that's the first time I met George and uh, Larry at Roger Williams in, right. over at Bristol. That was six years ago. And that's how the relationship and the love affair to this festival so, started. So they're showing that to the audience at R Roger Williams. Yes. 
you're from Switzerland, mm -hmm. and you flew in? Yes. To see? It was my first festival. What? That's fantastic. Had you been to the United States before? Yes, I studied half a year uh, in a college called Babson College. Okay. Uh, I had a, how do you call it, stipendium. Um, so it was paid for. Okay, um, like a scholarship. Yeah, it was a scholarship from, 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 from yeah. Switzerland. So I lived here for, I lived in, in Boston for, for half a year. Okay, wonderful. Yes. So then you, so then the relationship between the film festival and you as a filmmaker started at Roving Eye. Yes. And what was the name of that film? What was the name of your film? That the first one? Yeah. Forgiven is Not Forgotten. Forgiven is Not Forgotten. Yes. Okay. And then your next film, what was that one? My next film was called Sandrine. Sandrine. Yes, yes, Sandrine. And Sandrine... That premiered at the... That had the world premiere at the Rhode Island International Film Festival back in 2014. Yes. At PPAC, opening night. I remember. Vividly remember. That was the story of a young girl um, who uh, suddenly discovers feelings for another girl. Yeah. And that doesn't leave her alone. And she's in a really dark place until she gets out of that dark place by, by herself. She was so distinctive looking, right? Yeah, wearing that leather jacket. Leather jacket, the short hair. hair. Yeah. Great face. Uh, hypnotic, I almost want to say. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, what's her real name? Because Leonie Amandine. Leonie, because she and I are still Facebook friends. But I remember her sitting on the back of the bus, mm -hmm. right? There's a moment when she's sitting on... That movie had a... A magic to it. There's a magic to that movie. Thank you. Um, and it was very well received here. Did she win Best Actress? Or? She won Best Actress, and we won Audience Choice Award for Best LGBT Film. Yeah. And it played, I think, 25 film festivals in like 16 countries. We were, we couldn't be more blessed. You guys were embraced, warmly embraced. It's a wonderful film. So that was that opening night, and I'll never forget that. Then. The film after that was, was Maximilian? Yes. So that was first time documentary. Tell us about Maximilian. So when I do films, I want to tell stories where also I have a personal connection to. When I was a young kid, I was very good at math. Yeah, and I was bullied for it. And suddenly I come across this young kid in Switzerland. He's nine years old. And he just passed the secondary school exams that you usually pass when you're like 19. And he's nine. And he has like an IQ of 130 or something. And they were, they were doing TV shows about him. And there were articles in the press. They were really ripping apart his parents, saying like, you know, the parents are just uh, using his, the, the kid as a self-fulfillment and dragging him along the media. And I just caught that attention and figured out, like, I, I want to know, get to know that family. And I want to get to know that kid. I, f I felt the connection. Right. And I uh, met them. And I told them, like, listen, um, I want to tell your story my way. Are you open? They said, then the, the kid, fun story. Um, so I'm sitting with Maximilian and his mother and his father. So the four of us at the table. And so we meet for lunch and we toast, right? And the kid never says a word. He's just there with his iPad. He's totally absorbed, ignores me. You know? Are you thinking he's on the spectrum? On the? Spectrum, uh, artistic? They tested him, but he isn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he's just sitting there. Ignoring you. Ignoring you. Then we, we toast. And then he looks up from his iPad. How, how many times did it cling? How many times what? Did it cling when we toasted each other? It was a test. But since I'm not too bad at mathematics, I remember the formula. It's n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So we're four people. Four multiplied by three, it's 12, divided by two is six. So it clanked six times, like six times. And he really lit up like, you're the first filmmaker slash journalist who gets that question, right? You can make a film about me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it should have been a short documentary, like 20, 30, 40 minutes. And it ended up being an 80 minute feature documentary film that had the world premiere at Foil Film Festival. It's the only Academy Award qualifying festival in Northern Ireland. And then we had the North American premiere here in Rhode Island. And then it got sold to a German television station right after. Wow. So that was my, my third film. And they were happy with it as well? Well, when you make a documentary about real people, you have to stay true to, to the content and not try to please 
please, please, you whoever you make a film you. about. Right. So I'm sure that there were some, see so actually we made a pact before we screened it. I told them like, listen, stay true to yourself and I will show, show you the film when it's finished. And if you really disagree with something, we can talk about it. We did that. And the initial title was Supermax, right? Maximilian has superpowers, so Supermax. So he didn't like that title because he was afraid that people in school would call him then Supermax all the time. So like, okay, how about Maximilian? It's like, okay, that's it. Okay. So we changed the title and we slightly modified one scene and that's it. So then they could live with the film and they liked the film. Good. But they were never like... You, they, had, you gave, they gave you their blessing. Yes. Which and is, they traveled to Rhode Island with me. I remember, yeah. I remember yes. that Maximilian came to Rhode Island. And he was actually invited by Harvard University shortly after because they, they spotted him in Europe and they wanted to get him, but he, he doesn't want to live so far away from Switzerland. Wow. So did you find um, that, that it was a lot more challenging to do a documentary than the narrative, or a fictional narrative? The opposite. You found it easier? Documentary filmmaking is so cool. All you need is a... DOP. Patience. You need patience, <laughs> but you, all you need is a DOP, a cameraman, yep. and, Director uh, of photography. and a uh, sound guy. Yeah. So there's three of you, and you go, and it's cowboy style rock and roll. Right. And then in the editing room, you figure out what you want to do. Right. And in fiction, you know, it's like 20, 30 people, it's on a schedule. Um, you have control, though. In a fiction, the director is God, but what? in a documentary, God is the director. Okay. Right? Yeah. I heard that once from somebody, but okay. it's so true because you gave away that control. I, when you brought up Pell, when I was doing Pell, yes. in the beginning, I thought, okay, um, I believe there's a documentary here on my senator that I looked up to very much so. Mm. But I was worried that there would be no drama. I didn't know what the drama was. No shoe, yeah. So, no spine, right? I'm mm -hmm. worried about a spine of conflict. Mm -hmm. And I'm interviewing one of the um, subjects, and he was, like, giving me nothing. He was, like, a stone. An older gentleman, professor, and then finally, I, and I'm going to pass this along to you if you ever need it. I just said to him, I'm desperate, okay? I said, tell me a secret. He's like, what? I go, tell me a secret. Tell me something I don't know. Nobody knows. He goes, well, there was a clandestine meeting we had in a secret room to overthrow the uh, uh, house leader. Okay. <laughs> and I knew I had a spine. Yes. That, but that came out of, like, desperation and prying. Like, did you it's know... It's a good one. Did you know, like, what your structure was on Maximilian? Did you have any idea where your, sto you, where your story was going? Or, or, or did the story just lead you? I think the story led me and we just wanted to follow them in their lives for a certain kind of period of time. And yeah. then once you follow their lives, subplots open up where you want to spend more time with. Right. They mentioned they have a holiday house in the south of France. And the father mentioned, yeah, you guys should come up for one week. Like, ah, okay, so let's do that at the end of, 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 of the film when I have all the questions in my head and then I will ask all the questions. Right. So I, I guess you have to go in with a certain kind of idea more or less where you want to go and then the more you work the more narrow it becomes and, and the more um, focused probably but in a documentary it can also be totally like you have no clue and once you are in the editing room you watch your whole footage with Maximilian it was like 40 hours right and then it's like okay we have 40 hours it should be you know if it's going to be featured it's going to be 80 90 minutes right what do we want to do right and then the magic starts right where do you want to be, Nicholas, um, five, ten years from now? What, what, what are you, what's your goals? What are your, what's your hope? Well, my dream is to, to make a... So I, I did short fiction, feature documentary. My dream... I would like to do another feature documentary. Mm -hmm. um, cowboy rock and roll style like, like Maximilian. Yeah. But I think a big dream is that first feature fiction film with where you have a budget, where you don't have to worry about anything, where you have great talent working with you, pushing you, um, that you can really create something special. Um, but the idea or, or the, the fundament for that film needs to be really compelling. Right. Because like the first fiction film is always something very special. Right. And, you, and, and do you fund your films yourself? Or how do you get funding? Well, the first two films 
forgiveness not forgotten and Sandrine, I completely paid for myself. Mm -hmm. um, for Maximilian, I got, actually got producers. Okay. We were able to manage half of, yeah. to fund half of the film. Yeah. And Ion A was also funded like 50%. And the other 50% is the three Fs, friends, family, fools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think you're an outstanding filmmaker, great human being. Thank you, I Steven. think you're smart, too, because you're, you're, you're choosing topics that touch you, resonate you. They may come through different characters, but they also, the themes are, are important to you. Mm -hmm. And so you have a voice. Um, I think if we look at your films, you'll find there's a, there is a uh, thread through mm -hmm. your movies. You get, you're a terrific filmmaker. I love that you have that bond with the Rhode Island International Film Festival. I know I speak on their behalf to say, please continue making movies. Please continue bringing them here to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And I uh, um, just wish you the best of luck and continued success. Thank you so much, Stephen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, pal.